we need to keep a structure while also relaxing the pace. The structure brings that control and familiarity back, but also we need a bit of a flexible transition um, to keep the tension down at home. Most schools will be providing a structure for parents, but there's also a lot of um, sample structures available online, and it might be something that parent networks can share around structures that are really working for them. At first, it will seem like a real novelty to be doing school at home, but like with anything, the novelty will wear off over, the, over time. We're going into this with no clear answers as to how long we're going to be doing it for, and it's going to be a need for all parents and kids to tolerate that uncertainty. We're all in it together and we're all going to do the best we can um, during these circumstances. Keeping as much of the normal routine as possible brings that feeling of predictability back and that's what we really want. So keep things that can remain normal, uh, as normal as possible, such as your meal times, getting dressed in the morning, brushing your hair, brushing your teeth. Those little routines throughout the day that can remain, it's really important that they do remain. But then it's a great idea to let kids get involved in setting the structure for the day. So perhaps they can choose which lesson we start with on a particular day or which lesson that you finish with. And keep things fun just to keep the mood positive um, and uplifting as we go through this. So you might do a maths lesson where you're counting jelly beans. You might do um, physical activity by making an obstacle course and all jumping around. If you're someone who really likes to keep a clean house, you might bring out the glitter and the art and craft. And again, just keep that atmosphere of lightness um, as we're going through all this. You could do fun things like um, set up an assembly each week where you give out a merit award to your one, two, three, however many kids. Um, and just to keep the spirit fun, have disco dance parties, anything that you can see that your child um, might enjoy and it might be something interesting to add to your day, then feel free to relax the rules and go along with those. There are so many apps where kids can be connected, whether it's FaceTime or Zoom or Teams or Skype, um, where they can not only interact with their closest friends to keep those connections strong, but they can also talk to the whole class or as many people in the class as can. So as a parent, if you're not familiar with those kind of apps, um, see if you can learn a little bit about them and install them for your kids. We also might find um, that Utilising our parent networks, um, those parents who've got kids of similar ages where you could all do the same activity on a particular day and then everyone can join up on a group chat to show um, the results or send around pictures or videos of um, what you've accomplished during the day might again lead to that feeling of connectedness even though we're all keeping separate. Um, if you've got, if your kids have friends that live in the neighbourhood, you might want to go for a walk. Um, obviously we keep it a social distance, but you could let them know when you're going to be walking the dog past their house. They can come out to the doorstep and wave at you. Just a way of seeing each other in person and laughing um, and reminding your kids that it's temporary and we will get back to our normal routines as soon as we can. It's really important to acknowledge that what our children get out of school is not just learning the curriculum. Uh, there's social relationships that they learn about through play. There's also the pro-social behaviours that they learn like turn-taking, um, being thoughtful and kind. Uh, there's sports and arts and importantly there's learning to trust a caregiver who's outside the family in their relationship with their teacher. So as we've temporarily taken these experiences away, it's natural that our kids might be feeling some kind of loss. So it's really important that we acknowledge that loss um, with them. Ask them open-ended questions. Say, what is it that you're missing most about school? And it might be that the answers surprise you. But then it's possible to try and substitute where you can. So if your child says, well, actually, I'm really missing kicking the soccer ball around at lunch with my friends, you can go outside, you can kick a soccer ball with them. It may not be the same, but it might be just showing them that those experiences can still be had. Um, those, those feelings that they got from these activities are still possible to be felt while we're in this situation. There's a lot of resources out there for homeschooling and some already are, are quite intimidatingly long lists. So you could ask your parent networks to curate 
um, a list of one or two favourite apps that they've found that are great or favourite activities to do with the kids during the day and share them around and that way you can keep a developing and evolving list of um, new things to do. We don't know how long this is going to be for but if we keep supporting each other and keep sharing information like that we can keep things fresh and new even as the novelty of being at home all day starts to wear off. Keep flexible. I think if you think you've found a really, really good working structure, but if it just stops working for your kids, if they get tired or bored of it, or if you just can see it's not really working and, and the kids aren't as engaged, then don't feel that you've got to stick with it. Keep moving and keep changing things around. You may find that in the midst of all this, you just need a bit of a break and that's fine. Um, so if it means that you've got a day where you're just going to watch movies or um, hang out in the garden or listen to music or read books, that's okay. Perhaps sometimes we're going to need these days that are just breathers um, in order to keep the momentum going long term. Homeschooling kids of different ages while also working from home, while also perhaps looking after small children, is not going to be easy, um, but it is our reality and you're not alone. It's something here, this COVID-19 situation that is threatening our health, our loved ones, our income, and it's taking away a lot of the experiences that we were really looking forward to. So while we are all under this stress, it's important that if you start to feel overwhelmed, that you seek help. Um, healthdirect.gov.au has a really comprehensive list of online mental health resources, including Lifeline uh, and Beyond Blue and other sites and um, programs that can really help during this time. The best place to start if you're worried about either yourself or a family member is your local GP. And while we can't stay socially connected physically, um, we can still connect with people on the phone and online. Keep an eye out for those in your friends and family or in your local community who you think might be struggling and encourage them to seek help. And make sure you look after each other. Be patient, be kind. Uh, we are all in this together and I think it's that feeling of social cohesion, um, obviously emotionally, not physically, that is what will come out of this and what will get us through. <music>